Oh, it's nothing but ice. It is nothing but ice. So we are way out in the Ocho Coast with Greg. Um, what type of vehicle is it? It's a Forerunner. Forerunner. They got stuck in the snow, so we're gonna take the Jeep out and go try to get pulled out of here. We're like way in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, we're outside of Post Oregon, which is the geographical center of the state of Oregon, and is as middle of nowhere as it gets. And then we're way out in the middle of nowhere from there. So we're a long way from like anything. Yes. Oh wow, this all froze. Uh oh. Okay. There you go. Oh yeah, she's frozen. She's frozen solid. That part was I put all this on this morning and it was nice. Yes. Now the entire road that we drove in on was a sheet of ice. Yeah. And we're what we're standing on is a sheet of ice. In the snow on the ice. Yes. So I'm not 100% certain if this is gonna stay in place as I back the Jeep off. Okay. So I'm wondering if I go fast enough off of it, I can get the Jeep off before the truck starts to slide down the hill. Well, we're gonna find out. You hear that? I do. Oh, got a leaky valve stone. I, I, yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully you got onboard air. Was this the one that was low? Yeah, now I know why it was low. Yeah. Well, you you stay put. I have a spare tire, so. Oh, that's good. So I've actually never been for a ride in this thing, Casey. You haven't been in the track Jeep I have yet? not been in the track Jeep yet. Oh, it's a... Uh... I've been in tracked vehicles before with American track trucks on, or American track truck trucks on them. So it's just like that, but this Jeep. Yes. I actually used to maintain these for Elk Lake. Oh yeah? Yeah, when I worked for uh, a certain suspension shop here in town. <laughs> no free advertising. So, you you maintain the Elk Lake vehicles that have these on them? Yes. So, you know that like... They work. <laughs> they do, they work these things and... They put more miles on than I do. Absolutely. So what's the over under on this truck staying in place while I back off the trailer? Uh, I want to say 50% chance it stays put and 50% uh, chance it doesn't. I'm going to back up so I can get it in the shot. Success! Oh, okay. Oh, you're gonna back in here and then, okay, I, I understand. I'm gonna back in there and then pull down there where we can still get by it. All right, you gonna stick to that plan? No. <laughs> Casey's winding up for takeoff here. Perfect. Nothing ever goes this smoothly. Yeah. yeah. So everyone who wonders how I get the outside shots of the Jeep, this is an Insta360 X3 on a nine foot long pole. This is how I get those shots that people think are drone shots and like that. It sits out there. It's like Casey's going fishing. And uh, 
that's how we get those shots. There As you you'll go. see right now. So what happens is we just had this conversation of the best way to describe this is those tires aren't down to anything solid ground. Nope. They're in that sugar slush that's down there. But the chassis is sitting on this that holds up so well. The perfect way to describe it once the tires break through but don't reach anything and the chassis is sitting on it is a turtle on a fence post. Yep. When he's out there, you're not, you're just, you're not going anywhere. And that's no, the not even close. Everyone says, just shovel it out. Uh, how long did you shovel for? Hour and a half. How far did it get you? 10 feet. And that was 10 feet downhill, so. Yeah. Your, your, once you do this and the chassis sitting on that and your tires are yeah. not touching the ground, you're screwed. Yep. Turtle on a fence post. Yep. Super Casey action sequence, commence. There we go. Uh oh. Ooh, I know where it is. Where's your hitch line, Casey? It's Not in the back of my TJ. Well, this is a, what, DJ? Yeah, it's definitely not a. This is not a TJ. Oh. Hey, That's wait a so minute. Dumb. We can solve this problem. Look at the brain on Brad. What is what is this thing you're attaching? Is that a? This is like a, it's, it's a step, but also a rated pull point. So oh. like you can actually pull off of this. That's pretty cool. No, it's just a step one. And I have D-rings on the back of this. Oh, that's easy. I, uh was doing some experimenting at home uh, with some new types of rigging that the world has not seen yet because we just made it up. Yep. And um, I put my hitch link at the back of the TJ to do some of it and I don't think I ever took it out. Does that, uh, does that qualify you for your CHR uh, 13 yeah, qualification? Yeah, qualified in the CHR. You have to do some uh, special yeah. backyard rigging. No, no, you have to always forget the... Oh, oh, okay, that's part of it. And when I have this on the back of my Jeep, I usually just do this. Okay. But I'll soft shackle it. Just in case. So, so it's going to go downhill and around yeah. the corner and all that. Yeah, just to be safe. So you'll hop in. Okay. I think you just stay in neutral. All right. And I'm gonna have to get you bumped out of here because you're frozen in place. Right. And then you're gonna ride the brake a little bit. Okay. So that I'm, because we're so downhill. Yeah. I don't want you to like slack in the rope. Okay. Just ride the brake a little so this stays tension. And then I'll turn and go up the hill. All right. And you turn to follow me up. And obviously, once we're going uphill, I cut off the brake. It's like pulling the hill. <laughs> and I'll, I'll pull you up. There's plenty of room there where I can pull you up and you just stop there and I can get around you. So. Okay. Alrighty. Thing's frozen pretty good. It yeah, it's it's broke free. I think this time you'll be able to hit him. There you go. He's free. I'm sliding down the hill.
there you are. All right. Yeah, right tool for the job. Yeah. It does it does help a little bit. It sure does. So we're not crazy, but this is what we're after. Oh the agate. so the agates. That's There's an agate pit up here. Yeah. So that's we'll have what to we're looking for, but uh in the summertime next time. Well next time yeah. yeah. We'll be back. There you go. Yeah. Right on. I'll go up here and spin around and then come around you right here. Alright, I'll see what cowboy. Right there. 75 yards right there. So uh, you stay in the main ruts as best you can. All right. I'm probably going to hop out of them because it's smoother on that if I'm not in the ruts with those tracks. I understand. You so, track it down good, so I'll just yeah, track just it Just stay right on those main ruts even if I hop out of them and we'll... I think you're going to make it out to fight in here, so we'll head yeah. back. So this is one like... The recovery is so quick and easy on that, but we had to go so far to get here. Like, yeah. We are so far out in the middle of nowhere. Just quick off the loop, then. Like, that's so hard to translate into video. Yeah, I mean, because we drove, shoot, the better part of two hours, I think. Oh, at least. Like, yeah. Like, look out there. Look at the wilderness out there. Yeah, we are literally in the middle of nowhere. It is gorgeous out here. Blame the guy for trying to get up here, it's cool. Yeah, I kind of want to come back. I'm in the same boat. So now the question, do we want to like load back up here or do we want to drive the Jeep down the road away to load back up? Because we went through some snow to get up here. Well, we're, we're going down, so. That's what I'm worried about. Going up is a lot less dangerous than going down with a Jeep on a trailer. That's cell. that's your call. It's your tree, your Jeep and your truck and trailer. I love how you just totally worked your way out of the liability of this one. Yes, of course. I don't want to start sliding on that ice. Like, yeah. That's what makes me nervous. It is pretty slippery. Um, which would you which which would you rather have go first, the track Jeep or uh, truck and trailer? It doesn't matter. Just I think the only problem is them going down together. Gotcha. So, yeah, because you create so much weight, and this, this thing's going to push you around the corner. So Yeah, and there was some deeper stuff. How about you drive this down, and I'll drive that down. Sounds good. And then we'll load up down there where it's nicer. All righty. Casey, for whatever reason, has entrusted me with the track Jeep, and uh, I got to go drive it. Nice knowing you. So... Due to the icy sketchiness of this hill, I'm gonna drive the truck and trailer down empty till we get to better ground. Ethan is back there. He's gonna drive the track jeep down. And then I believe the customer is gonna follow. It is absolutely beautiful out here. These are some big, big private ranches out here we're kind of driving through right now on each side of the road. What an amazing place to be able to live. Oh, I don't know if you guys see, but up there on that ridge right up there, there's a um, uh, wind socky deal for airplanes. So they might have like a bush plane or something land on that ridge. That would be the way to live in the middle of nowhere is to have a place like this out here so remote and have your own bush plane to fly in and out of it. That's doing it right. Maybe one day YouTube will pay me like private ranch and bush plane money, but uh, that, that day is not today. All right, I have survived driving a Jeep. I figured I wouldn't make you beat your head too far down on the water. Yeah, no kidding. It's rough once you start hitting the water. Oh yeah. Professional. I 
That thing just barely fits. Casey. It's a Jeep thing, I wouldn't understand. What's going on? What's going on is I can't drive today. And I don't know why. Like it's not hard. You put you take that and you put it there and you strap it down and you drive away in the sunset. Can you do it this time? Third time's a charm. Yeah, I moved over so far, right? How am I? Why you do these? I moved over a long way, right? Uh, I can't really tell. You just need a bigger trailer. Okay. Now I'm coming out of the fire. All right. Here, right? Yep. Work? Yeah, you're on. I think you should, I think that one should work. Bingo. There you go. Riding the struggle bus today, Casey, damn. What are we doing, Casey? The sign says meatloaf sandwiches. Are we gonna find out? Yes. All right. I'm standing in the center of Oregon, which is in the center of nowhere. Yes. So we saw the sign on the way in that said the coldest drinks in town. And uh, this is this is the entire town. I think by default, they have the only drinks in town. Let's go see. 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily. I like it already. Oh, all right. Good, how are you doing? Hey there. Good. We have sandwiches to set. Mm -hmm. I will have a meatloaf sandwich. Would you like one? Sure. Two meatloaf sandwiches, please. What percent? Uh, I'll just have some chips. Uh, chips as well. Okay, I'll get one. Appreciate it. This is neat, man. Uh, I got the post office and everything. Post office, yeah. yeah. right? Hold on, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're in post Oregon, so it's the post This is the office? post post office. Or is it the post office? Or is it the post post office? This is the post office at this is the post post office. Man, it's confusing. Are you all the photography? Yeah. This is all from a guy who lives here. Oh, very cool. Donald. Aspen Valley Ranch. Five mile radius. I mean, shoot, we saw like five or six hawks and eagles today, right? We saw two eagles and we had another three or four hawks. Yeah, quite a bit. There's tons of wildlife out here. It's pretty impressive stuff, man. You even got underwear. There you go. What's I, bet, I bet I bet this store is like uh, the alfalfa store, which yeah. is only half sizes, but like 
if you need it, it is in that store. Right. You might have to ask, you might have to like be under something, else. it's there. Yeah. Ugh. All right. We got our meatloaf sandwiches. So it comes with your choice of sides. There's mac salad. There's what else? There's chips. We got chips. Doesn't matter. It's just good. Right, we got barbecue sauce and mayonnaise on some like white wonder bread. That's good meatloaf. If you're in post Oregon for some reason, do yep. it. Definitely do it. We came up with a scale of how to rate food. I'd give us like a like a seven on that scale, which uh, I think is. Five. Does, does your scale take into account that we are in post Oregon? No. Now rescale that. Rescale that. Um, let's see. Seven is delicious. So we have. Well, you have like written down. I have it written down. You have an actual chart. I have an actual chart for this very occasion. Zero is, uh, uh, came from the backside of a dog. Um, one is vile. Two is offensive. Uh, three is unsatisfactory. Four is mediocre. Five is average. And then six is tasty. Seven is del uh, delicious. Eight is scrumptious. Nine divine. Okay, the the meatloaf inside of this yes. is 10 for meatloaf. Yeah, I agree. Best meatloaf I've ever had. This is a phenomenal meatloaf, which is number 10. So, so it's a phenomenal meatloaf in a seven package. Yes. Can't, can't say I'd expect anything really less. It's pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. They got a sign outside that says meatloaf sandwiches. Probably came from that cow right there. Probably. That's the best thing about like the alfalfa store. Mm -hmm. They have like fresh meats in there. There you go. The cows are out back in the field behind the store. <laughs> Doesn't get fresher than that. Fresh as it gets. Well, anyways, thanks for watching. Have a good one.